if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. Up till now, we have seen various kinds of uh, pollutions depending upon which natural source is getting polluted. Now, we have to talk about another important thing in this chapter and that is greenhouse effect, which actually results or is resulting into global warming. Now, what exactly is global warming? There is temperature of the Earth's atmosphere increasing and this is happening all over the globe. So, the overall atmospheric temperature is increasing and that is why we are calling it global warming. Now, what exactly is greenhouse effect? Uh, to understand this, there is a very simple thing that solar radiation, when it falls on the Earth's surface, so, if we have to understand this, say this is earth's surface and sunlight falls on earth's surface. It enters into earth's atmosphere, falls on the surface. The earth's surface gets heated. Earth's surface gets heated. Now, this is a very uh, common or universal thing that any hot object releases infrared radiations. So when sunlight falls on the earth's surface, earth's surface gets heated and any hot object or surface will emit infrared. Now these infrared are heat producing radiations. And because of these heat producing radiation, the Earth's atmosphere has an average temperature of 15 degrees plus. If these infrared radiations were not there, then the temperature would have been minus 19 degrees Celsius in absence of infrared, in absence of infrared radiation, the temperature of earth would have been in minus. Because we are able to survive on earth as we have the optimum temperature 15 degrees Celsius uh, average, this is because of this infrared. This is part one and this is what is called greenhouse effect. Now in the earth's atmosphere, here is this atmosphere, Earth's atmosphere has some gases and they are able to trap infrared. These gases are called greenhouse gases. And what do they do? The greenhouse gases trap infrared radiations. So if the number, concentration or amount of these in, uh, greenhouse gases increases in the earth's atmosphere, more and more infrared radiations would be trapped. If more and more of infrared radiations are trapped, that means the temperature of the earth's atmosphere is going to increase. Now, which are these gases? Greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, methane, CFC that is chlorofluorocarbon and oxide of nitrogen that is N2O. These are greenhouse gases out of which these two are the most important because maximum uh, they only trap the infrared radiation. Now what is the percentage of these greenhouse gases? The percentage if we have to represent maximum 60%
this is slightly more than this. So about 60% is of carbon dioxide. Then about 20% is methane. 16, sorry, 14 percent is CFC and 6 percent is N2O. So, maximum concentration of greenhouse uh, which is there is of carbon dioxide and then is uh, methane. So, this is how uh, the percentage changes. So, this is 20 percent. So, 60 percent is carbon dioxide. 20% is methane, sorry, methane, 14% is CFC and 6% is N2O. If amount of carbon dioxide increases beyond the normal concentration, then Earth's atmospheric temperature is going to increase because basically the greenhouse gas is increasing. And in last decade, in last 10 years, that is last decade, the earth's average atmospheric temperature has increased by 0.6 degrees Celsius. Now, uh, it might sound like 0.6 degrees is not that significant, but this 0.6 increase in temperature is enough to melt the polar ice caps. And polar ice caps have already started melting. If we see the image which shows the ice on the poles 10 years back and now we find that the ice has reduced tremendously. And this is one reason. Now this increase in temperature is happening everywhere and that is why we are calling it global warming. <clears throat> now if the polar ice caps melt, then what is going to happen? One, the water level in the oceans is going to increase because ultimately all that water will enter into the oceans. Second, polar ice caps are responsible for maintaining the weather cycle. So the weather cycle will also get affected. Uh, get affected and this is what we are seeing these days that normally when we have regular seasons the summers have increased the normal duration of summers is like six months or seven months very short rainy season then very short winter so this is all because of this fluctuation in the weather cycle which is happening because of melting of the polar ice caps now, because of the same thing, there is one more change which is called El Nino effect. It is called El Nino or El Nino. So, what exactly happens here is that near the equator, whichever oceans are there, their surface temperature is increasing. So, this is supposedly a temporary change. So it is a temporary increase in the surface water temperature of oceans near equator. Now what exactly happens because I'm sure you're uh, hearing this uh, El Nino thing more commonly these days because we said it is a temporary thing earlier. It was uh, an event or a phenomenon which would repeat itself in 10 years, then it became 7 years, then it became 5 years, then it became 3 years and for last 3 years, consecutive 3 years, we are still in El Nino. That means it has become like a permanent uh, phenomenon. So what happens in this El Nino and how the weather cycle gets affected? See, surface water temperature increases. As the water temperature increases, we know the air which is in contact with that warm water is going to rise because warmer air is lighter. So the warm air rises, but the temperature is not that high that water vapor can be formed. So only the warm air is rising and it will make clouds. 
but these clouds are without water vapor. So you may see clouds, but they are not actually going to precipitate. That means there is no rainfall. So cloud formation takes place, but there is no rainfall. And if there is no rainfall, no monsoon, ultimately it is the weather cycle which gets affected. Agriculture is dependent on uh, uh, monsoon, the water tables are dependent on the rainfall. So ultimately the whole weather cycle gets affected and that because it used to be a temporary uh, phenomenon, we define it as temporary. But for last few years, it is like we are in El Nino for last 3-4 uh, years. So unless and until the weather cycle is regularized, this change is still going to take place. So what is greenhouse effect we have understood and which are the main gases responsible for these or for this greenhouse effect. Okay. Now in the next part we will talk about ozone and ozone depletion.